In this video we shall dive into the underground, the part of the world that we rarely think about. Of course there are many videos on gigantic sea monsters, flying monsters and space kaiju, but the subterranean ecosystem of this world and other planets have produced some of the biggest monsters ever. So in this list we will exclude the smaller ones and only include only the extremely large underground creatures and kaiju. We will take them from games, movies and also TV shows. So here's what we have on this topic. At number 10 we have Baragon. His name means Rose Dragon but he is far from a dragon as the conventional sense goes. He is subterranean and a four-legged mammal-like reptilian creature with a reddish brown skin, a horn on his forehead and large floppy dog-like ears. The petals on his back are inspired by roses. In the Showa series, Baragon burrowed underground and survived the Cretaceous extinction event while most of the dinosaurs died. He appeared briefly in Destroy All Monsters movie but in GMK he was the guardian monster of Japan along with Mothra and Ghidorah and in his incarnation he was 30 meters tall or close to 100 feet and weighed 10,000 tons. Baragon is a capable tunneler able to disappear under the earth in a matter of seconds. Number 9 Hakuja Next on this list we have a kaiju from the Pacific Rim universe appearing in the second Uprising movie. It was one of the three kaiju that made landfall in Japan and later on combined to form the Mega Kaiju. It is a hexapedal monster covered in crustacean-like armor with a body style similar to that of an alligator. Similar to a mole, it is capable of burrowing uh, many feet or meters underground, using its armored head to break through the ground and to ambush and attack its opponents. Hakuja's muscles are strengthened by its molten blood and its armor-plated spiked tail can pierce the armor of a heavily armored mecha specifically a Jaeger in this franchise. It is 53.5 meters long as per officially stated figures but honestly it would be around 150 meters long or 492 feet long as per our estimates. Number 8 Megalon This kaiju made its first appearance in the 1973 Godzilla film Godzilla vs Megalon. Megalon superficially resembles a cross between a cockroach and a rhinoceros beetle, though standing upright. Despite being an underground creature, Megalon is noticeably colorful combining silver and grey tusks and claws with an orange and black carapace and wings. Megalon's forelimbs terminate with two sharp drill-like appendages which it uses to burrow and move beneath the ground. It is a gigantic insectoid being that lives deep underground in the subterranean kingdom of Seatopia. Megalon is seen as the Seatopian's god and it's called upon by them to defend their home from various threats. It is 55 meters long or 180 feet long and 40,000 tons. Number 7 Sarlacc This next one is from the Star Wars universe and they are seen first in the Return of the Jedi. The Sarlaccs were dangerous carnivorous creatures as well as one of Jabba the Hutt's favorite pets. They inhabited the great pit of Karkoon in the dune sea of the planet called Tatooine. It shared common ancestry with other monstrous Star Wars alien species including the Rathar, the Blixus and the Vixus. At 100 meters long, its entire body was buried in sand save for its massive mouth and beak tongue. The Sarlacc has several appendages that branch off from its uh, buried body and also have many stomachs. These creatures start as small, almost microscopic spores but they reach maturity around 30,000 years later and they could grow up to 100 meters or 330 feet long. Number 6 The Great Dragon This famous creature of the Star Wars franchise made its first life debut in the second season of the show The Mandalorian, although it was seen first in an older Star Wars film as a skeleton in the Tatooine Desert in Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope. The Greater Great Dragon was the larger of two subspecies of Great Dragons. They are giant carnivorous reptiles found on Tatooine. They were characterized by their long neck, whip-like tail, horns, sharp teeth and five pairs of legs. The greater great dragons submerged themselves in the shifting sand dunes and would emerge to consume their prey. It was also capable of spitting a highly corrosive acid onto attackers. The size of these greater great dragons were estimated to be around 100 meters or 330 feet long. Number 5 The Muto Prime This is the penultimate stage of a female Muto from legendary Godzilla's Monsterverse. It looks like the first female Muto but has a hardened outer shell with razor sharp back spires upon it. It has also tremor inducing orange glowing forelimbs which are its wave digging underground and traveling below the surface. It also has several smaller pairs of forelimbs on her chest 
And unlike the other two females seen in 2014 and 2019, Prime walks on four legs instead of six, as it appears that some limbs were fused together during the process of metamorphosis. Mutra Prime was much larger than Dagon and Godzilla 2014, estimated to be around 106 meters or 350 feet tall and weighing 135,000 tons. She could very well be a very ancient form of the Queen Muto. Number 4. The Jen and the Darin Moran On the fourth spot, we have clubbed two monsters together from the Monster Hunter franchise. These are two elder dragons that have specialized their life to live underground and beneath the desert landscapes. They are the Jen Moran and the Darin Moran. The Jen Moran is an extremely large monster with a long, almost serpentine-like body shape. On each side of its head are sturdy, sharp, and the tusk while there is just one sharp razor sharp horn on the Darin Moran which also possess a similar body appearance. Unlike its relative the Gen Moran, its body is jagged with spine like protrusions on its forelegs and its back. While the Gen Moran is introduced in the third part, Darin Moran is seen in Monster Hunter 4 and both of them are around 110 meters or 360 feet long. Number 3. The Weirworms Seen in the third Hobbit movie, The Battle of the Five Armies, these were worms, are also known as the Earth Eaters by the Orcs of Tolkien's works, and they are extremely gigantic monsters of Middle-earth. They were creatures told in the stories of the Hobbits. Although possibly mythical, they were thought to be terrible monsters that made their home in the last desert, said to be located far to the east of the Shire. In the film, they are involved with digging massive underground tunnels by which the Orc armies pass through undetected to launch a surprise attack. In the film, they are depicted as absolutely gigantic, with Weta Digital stating that these monsters are 120 meters or 400 feet long and 75 feet in diameter. Number 2. The Sandworms Introduced in the 1965 novel, sandworms are colossal worm-like creatures that live in the desert planet called Arrakis. These sandworms were also seen in the 1984 movie the 2000 miniseries Dune and the 2003 Children of Dune and will also make a comeback this year with the remake of the original movie. These sandworms were gigantic life forms of the planet Arrakis and live in the vast deserts and sand dunes that stretch across the surface of the planet. Sandworms live beneath the sand. These huge creatures are thought to grow up to 1000 meters or 3300 feet long, but that is just legend behind these beasts in the Dune universe. Although very rarely, some specimens up to 450 meters long are spotted by observers in the planet's deep deserts. And number 1. The Rift Worm The biggest of the underground monsters are these absolutely enormous creatures from the game Gears of War. The Rift Worms were massive worm-like creatures that were 8 to 10 miles or 13 to 16 kilometers long and half a mile across or 800 meters. They are semi-intelligent creatures and these rift worms created the hollow by burrowing through the crust of the planet Serra and they leave behind their ways that enriches the soil and acts as a source of life inside the hollows. The rift worm were viewed as gods by some of the inhabitants of the planet such as the locusts and was used by the high priest antagonist Scorch as a living weapon of mass destruction. And so with that we come to the end of the video about the biggest underground monsters. There are quite a lot of small examples but that would be in another video I hope. So hit that like, subscribe and bell button for regular notifications about our future videos.